Hey guys, in this video I'm going to show you how to draw the Lewis dot structure for the bromate ion. So here we go. Uh, the bromate ion is uh, Br bromine O3 minus. So that's going to give us seven valence from the bromine plus three oxygens each with six electrons plus one more for the negative one charge for a total of 26 valence electrons, okay? And so, uh, subtract out the largest multiple of eight, which is going to be 24, leaves you with two. Divide that by two gives you one. 24 is eight times three. So that means that this shape is going to be an AX3. So a central atom, three peripheral atoms, AX3 from this eight times three, E1 with one non-bonding pair on the central atom, okay? So let's go ahead and start to draw this. We have the bromine in the center, surrounded by three oxygens, one, two, three. Let's go ahead and single bond all of those and fill out their octets, okay? And then we also have to add on this lone pair, non-bonding pair on the bromine, okay? So there we go. Now, if you were to calculate the formal charges, this, this, this might look right, but if you check the charges, it's uh, not actually going to be correct. You're gonna have some pretty high formal charges. So what we're gonna end up doing is moving this non-bonding pair and this oxygen to make it a double bond and we're going to end up doing the same thing over here. So there's two double bonds, one for each of these oxygens, one single bond, and we still have the non-bonding pair of electrons there. And don't forget to add in the braces, or brackets, because it's an ion, and put the charge up top. So let's go ahead and check the formal charges to make sure that this is correct. The uh, formal charge on the bromine now is going to be uh, the seven valence brought in, minus one, two, three, four, five bonds, minus one, two non-bonding electrons for a formal charge of zero. And you see before, if we had the single bonds, it, it would have been uh, um, plus two. And you don't want to have anything like plus two as a, a formal charge, all right? Um, now we can check the formal charges on, let's say, the oxygen with a single bond, O sub one. So this oxygen is in right here. Um, that's six valence brought in, minus one bond, minus two, four, six non-bonding electrons for a formal charge of negative one. And now the uh, formal charge on the oxygen with two with a double bond, so O sub two. So it's both of these oxygens here, which so it's uh, six valence brought in for each one, minus one two bonds for each, minus one two three four non-bonding electrons. Formal charge of zero. Multiply that times two because there are two of those double bonded oxygens. If you add all these up, that gives you an overall formal charge of negative one which is what we want because the charge on this ion is minus one, okay? So that's supposed to match up. Now, notice that we chose these two oxygens to have the, the two double bonds. You could have picked any two oxygens, which leads to resonance structures. Um, I'm not gonna draw those, it's kind of a waste of time to draw them, but basically you're just gonna have two different pairs of oxygens that have the double bonds, not just these left and right, but maybe right and upper or left and upper, okay? So let's go ahead and talk about the shape now. Uh, with AX3E1, this is going to have a trigonal uh, pyramidal shape. And when you have that shape, the bond angles are going to be approximately equal to 107 degrees. All right. Now, um, in terms of hybridization, you have the central atom surrounded by one, two, three peripheral atoms as well as one non-bonding pair. So there's one, two, three, four electron groups. So sp3, 1s, and 3ps. So those are four orbitals, so sp3 hybrid. And due to the fact that you have this non-bonding pair of electrons here, that is going to make this a polar compound. All right, that is pretty much it for this ion. If you have any questions, let me know. And thanks for watching.